We all have those games where we did a lot. You know, we took out a lot of garrisons, a lot of enemy supplies, maybe a lot of tanks and vehicles, whatever it might be. But it doesn't show up on our experience totals. And it's kind of depressing. Especially when you're trying to grind for a class, maybe you're going for the assault, level 9, getting that satchel charge. But it's a grind. And it takes a long, long time to get those classes. But... There may be some easier ways to get this accomplished, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Some nice ways to level up your classes a little faster, so that way you don't have to spend as much time grinding them, so you can move on to another class you can grind and get all your classes to where you want them. The first method we're going to discuss is arguably the easiest and most tried and true method to getting more XP during a match, and that is building nodes. To build nodes, you need to be the engineer and put the blueprint down and have supplies available. For each node, you need at least 50 supply to build them. And in total, the engineer can build one of each node, being the manpower, the munitions, and the fuel node. And your team can have a total of three of each node. So that means three fuel, three munitions, three manpower. Now, this can be done in a multitude of ways. You can use a support player, ask for an airdrop if the command can spare one, a supply truck if they've got the fuel or if there's a default one. There's just numerous ways you can get the supply to build the nodes. So it's not that hard to build overall and typically you can build them in most locations. Now building nodes does two things. One, it provides the commander with more resources for which they can call in more tanks, more airstrikes, you get the picture. And what it does for you is it provides you with experience. What this does is, so for every node you build, it's 40 points towards your support score. So you build all three, that equals 120. But for every minute that they're alive, you get 10 points. Times that by three, and you get 30 points a minute. So as you're playing, as long as the nodes are alive, you will constantly get points every minute into your support score. And the way this applies to any class is it simply by redeploying and changing classes. Any experience or points earned while in a particular class, say I swap from Engineer to Assault, any points from that point forward will go on to my Assault class and not my Engineer class. So you'll get the points for building the nodes for the Engineer class, but any passive points you get while the nodes are alive will apply to your Assault class or whatever class you're using in that moment. I'm just using Assault as an example. Nodes are really good for that passive XP bonus that you can get, but I'd argue there are better ways even if they are very situational in nature. This comes in the form of being a supply truck driver and running supply crates to the front line. Now, I'll say this up front, this is best used for offensive game mode if you are the defending team. It doesn't work so much if you're on the offensive team or warfare, but I'll get to those in a little bit. Being a supply truck driver has a lot of benefits, even if it's a quote-unquote boring job. It's very important in the grand scheme of things if you're playing on an offensive game mode as a defending team. Typically, the commander, in this sense, wants the fourth objective to be built up with defenses. Mostly since it's the closest objective that can still be used for supply trucks to drop their supplies. But here's the problem. Someone's got to run those supplies up. This is where you come in. Usually there's always at least one or two engineers that are back there already getting ready to build, but they need supplies to build. And the commander may not be able to spare airdrops, and those airdrops only have 100 supplies, and they take time to come back. Trucks, on the other hand, can carry supply crates of 150 supplies, and you get two of them. So you can drop off a total of 300 supplies in one run, go back to a headquarters and run it again. Now this will add up a lot over time with more engineers on the objective. And yes, this does vary from time to time, but you're still usually gonna have one or two that tries to build on the point. So you at least get something for this. But you'll get points several different ways. The biggest way here by doing this is getting points for the supplies used. So every little bit of supplies that are used, you get credit for. So for instance, if a barricade that the level 1 takes up 25 supplies to get built, you get 25 points. So, and that goes on for upgrades, so if it's upgraded to level 2, you get 50, and then level 3 is 75. You get 75 points towards your score. And that's where most of your points are going to come. The more supplies you bring in and gets used, the more points you get. Now, 
you get points two other ways as well that are a little less, but they're still points that I'm going to touch on. You get points for driving the truck. For every minute that you are in the supply truck, you get 30 points. So combine that with you're driving for maybe 20 or 30 minutes on end, you get a lot of points. I'll display that on the screen here. Another statistic you get points in for your class is your defense score. By doing this, you're going to spend a lot of time in the blue zone. This goes for the same as the attacking or red zone, but I'm mostly talking about the blue zone since you're going to spend a lot of time here. By not having to redeploy every time you get killed, you spend a lot of time in the blue zone. And every minute you spend in the blue zone, you get 20 points. And I'll put another example up on screen so you see that score. This is one example of running a supply truck and what experience you truly can get in your support score. Now, it is slightly inflated because I did build nodes in this match, but if anything, that just adds to it. If you build nodes and do this, your score will go up even higher. There were some matches that I got up to four, even 5,000 points when doing this method of just driving supplies to the front and letting the engineers go to town. Now, even though this is the most effective on offensive as a defending team, you can still get some usefulness out of it on warfare or if you're the attacking team on offensive. By simply running supplies to the front line, whether that's the red zone or the blue zone. Your main objective here is to put down supplies for garrisons to be built, as using a truck is a lot quieter and a more sneaky method of getting supplies behind the lines or wherever you wish without giving it away, as airdrops are a bit obvious if you're paying attention. And typically when you do this, more often than not, surprisingly, you'll find that an officer or a spotter or a commander will notice these and will either go build a garrison themselves or point it out for a nearby officer to build a garrison, especially if it's in the red zone, since people more often than not prefer to attack rather than defend, especially in warfare. That is your gain if you are able to deliver the supplies. On top of that, you get the bonuses that I've already mentioned of driving the truck and being in the red and blue zone for extended periods of time. Now, when you get tired of driving a truck around all day, you can maybe play some Bob the Builder Simulator by breaking out a hammer and helping build defenses. The following classes have a hammer with them, so there's no lack of hammers on those classes or classes you can level up, at least for this case. So by doing this and using a hammer to help build up defenses gives you more support score that goes to your classes. And this works a couple different ways. So, for instance, if you have an engineer who's building barbed wire fence and you help them build, you get a share of points. In the example you have on screen here, the engineer's going to place down some barbed wire and I get 10 points from the barbed wire, but my score goes up by 20. The other reason and the extra part of this is if you bring in the supplies, as I did in this example. So I get 20 points, 10 for the supplies used. 10 for the amount of supplies or score that the engineer would have gotten for the defenses themselves. So take this into account for barricades and bunkers. These structures require a bit of time to upgrade and build and a lot of resources, especially the bunkers. By helping the engineers out by building these structures up, you get a lot of points really quickly for your efforts. Combine this with bringing in the supplies and you essentially double that total. So if you, instead of just upgrading and bringing the supplies as well, you're doubling your support score, which in turn gives you more XP for your classes. And on top of that, you're helping build defenses for the rest of your team and providing a better strong point so that your guys can defend a lot easier. Now, why did I go through all these little methods and do they really work? Well, I feel like they do. And I bring them up for two major reasons. One is teamwork. This game requires teamwork, and the more teamwork you have, the easier the game is, and just able to be operated in. If you got a team that is not working together in conjunction with one another, your team's going to struggle, and it's more of a hope of the enemy team is in worse disarray than yours is to make something work. But when you do have a team that does work together, even in a half-decent sense, it makes the game go by better, and overall, you have a better time. Second, you benefit majorly by being a team player and building nodes, bringing in supplies, helping build. By doing these methods and in some cases combining them, saying building nodes, bringing in supplies, and helping build, you're going to make a lot more experience over the course of that match alone than you would in two, maybe even three matches of having good combat games and that means good combat games so you're taking out a couple tanks you've taken a lot of infantry and buildings 
if you have a bad game, then this really helps because no matter how good you do effectively in combat, this score is more consistent than what you would get in a combat field. Or at least it may not be always consistent, but you're going to always get more score typically than you would on a combat scene. So by doing these methods, you're going to level up your classes faster and then move on to the next one you want to do. So it just works out for you in the end. And that's all I really have for you today. I hope you learned something from the video. Hope you use these in combat. And I'll see you in the next one.